We have made it to chapter 9 of the Westing game. Um, if you remember back in chapter 8, you learned a lot about how the pairs are kind of working together and some of their clues. So we're kind of moving forward now as they're starting to put their clues together. You might remember they're snowbound, which means that nobody can get to the towers and nobody can leave the towers because it's so snowy outside. They just went through a huge blizzard. So chapter 9. Oh, and we ended. This was kind of a big deal. Um, Seidel Plasky had written down notes as she listened to the reading of the will, but they were all in shorthand. Um, if you know what shorthand looks like, okay, shorthand notes look like this. I just kind of Googled. So it says, there is a ninja standing behind you. This is what that would look like written down. You can see how weird these little squiggles and squirrels are. I don't know. Um, secretaries and things used to use, I think it's kind of an outdated thing now, but secretaries and note takers and that used to use um, shorthand to actually, you can see how weird that looks, um, take notes quickly instead of having to write every single word. So this is what Seidel's notes look like. So if I were to take her notebook, I wouldn't be able to do much with it because I can't transcribe those notes. I can't translate what exactly these notes say. So, but somebody has taken her notebook and they probably don't realize her notes are in shorthand yet. So that's kind of an interesting twist. But anyway, her notebook that she had taken all the notes on the will on is gone. Chapter nine, lost and found. Early the next morning, a typed index card was tacked to the elevator's back wall. Lost. Important business papers of no value to anyone but the owner. Please return turn to Seidel Plasky 3C. No questions asked. So you can see she's after these notes. The shorthand notebook was not returned, but the idea of a bulletin board was an instant success. By late afternoon, the elevator was papered with notices and filled with tenants facing sideways and backwards reading as they rode up and down. Lost. Silver cross on filigree chain, topaz pin and earrings, gold filled cufflinks, return to Grace Windsor Wexler, 3D. Reward. All players willing to discuss sharing their clues, come to the coffee shop tomorrow, 10 a.m. Whoever stole my Mickey Mouse clock better give it back. Just leave it in the hall in front of the apartment, 3D, when no one's looking. Turtle Wexler. Order down, not up, or come to the fifth floor and dine in elegance at Shin Hu's restaurant, specializing in exquisite Chinese cuisine. Lost, string of pearls, sentimental value. If found, please bring them to apartment 2C. Thank you, Flora Bombach. Dressmaking and alterations reasonably priced. Found, six clues. The following clues printed on squares of Westing toilet tissue were found in the hallway, or er, in the third floor hallway. Braided, kicking, tortoise, C, a brat. So, okay, somebody did that just to be funny. So, obviously, they're taking a jab at turtle. I am having an informal party this evening from 8 o'clock on. You are all invited. Please come. JJ Ford, apartment 4D. Turtle, wherever you are, be home at 7.30 sharp. Your loving mother. Mom, I'm home. No one else was. On reading Mrs. Wexler's note in the elevator, Flora Bombach had insisted, you must do what your mother says. When Turtle replied, like showing us our clues? Flora Bombach's answer was, perhaps so. After all, she is your mother. Flora Bombach was sappy. I was smiling that dumb smile. I was so polite to everyone. I was so timid. When they had finally reached the snowbound broker, Flora Bombach was so nervous, she dropped the telephone. Turtle had to admit to some nervousness herself. But it was the first real order she had ever had to place. For a minute there, she thought she might choke on the thumping heart that had jumped into her throat. But she pulled off the transaction like a pro. Now, if only the stock market would go up, she'd show Mr. Westing about refining gold. The next pair of will, or next part of the will would read, Whichsoever pair made the most money with the $10,000 inherits the whole estate. She was sure of it. Oh, there you are, Grace Wexler asked, or acted as if Turtle was the tardy one, but she quickly sweet sweetened. Come, dear, let's go to your room and I'll fix your hair. Her mother sat behind her on the edge of the narrow bed, loosened the dark brown hair and brushed it to a gloss. She had not done that with such care in a long, long time. Have you eaten? 
Mrs. Bombach made me a dinner. Turtle felt the fingers dividing the hair into strands. Her mother was so warm, so close. Your poor father's probably starving. He's been so busy on the phone, changing appointments and all. Daddy's eating in the coffee shop. I just saw him there. Turtle dashed in, shouting. The braided tortoise strikes again and kicked a surprised Theo in the shin. It was Doug who, not Theo, who had made the sign. Her mother twisted the three strands into a braid. I think you should wear your party dress tonight. You look so pretty and pink. Pretty? She had never word used that word before. Not about her. What's going on? You know, sweetheart, I'm rather hurt that you won't tell your own mother about your clues. So that was it. She should have known. My lips are sealed, Turtle said defiantly. Just one eensy beensy clue, Grace wheeled, winding a rubber band around the end of the braid. Mmm, Turtle replied through sealed lips. Angela came into the room and tugged Turtle's braid. Only her sister could get away with that. Beaming on her favorite, Grace took her hand and then gasped. <gasps> Angela, where's your engagement ring? I have a rash on my finger. Thump, thump. Seidel Pulaski appeared in the doorway. Hi, what's everybody doing in the closet? See, I told you this is a closet, Turtle said. Grace ignored the complaint. It did no good being nice to that ungrateful child. Never satisfied. I was whining about something or other. Oh, hello, Miss Pulaski. I've been feeling a bit weakly, thank you, but nothing can keep me from a party. Seidel's crutch was painted in black and white squares to match her black and white checkered dress. Her large hoop earrings were also black and white. The white one dangled from the left ear, the black one from her right. The party is such a lovely idea, Grace said, warming up to the owner of the shorthand notes. When I saw the invitation in the elevator, I suggested to Mr. Who that he call the judge to see if she needed hors d'oeuvres, and sure enough, he got an order for six dozen. She turned to Angela. Hadn't you better get dressed, dear? It's getting late. It's too bad Dr. D can't escort you to the party, but your father and I will take you. Angela and I are going together. We're partners, you know. Seidel had it all planned. They were to appear in identical costumes. Tonight was the night they would discover if one of the heirs was a twin. I'm going to the party with Mrs. Bomba, Turtle remarked. The sign said everyone's invited. Again, Grace ignored her. By the way, Miss Pulaski, I do hope you've changed your mind about showing me your notes. It was the secretary's turn to seal her lips. She wouldn't put it past that uppity Grace Windsor Wexler to seal the notebook from an unfortunate cripple and then rub it in. Grace tried again, her voice dripping with honey. You know, of course, that if I do win the inheritance, everything I own goes to Angela. Turtle bounded up. Let me out of here. A person can't breathe in this closet. She kicked the bed, kicked the chair, kicked the desk, and elbowed past the disapproving secretary. What in the world is wrong with that child? Her mother said. So, obviously, we know what's wrong with her. She said everything goes to Angela once she dies. Well, Turtle's her kid, too, so obviously that upset her. And I think it'd be kind of upsetting to have somebody treat you like she was and then find out that she was only treating you that way to get something from you. So Turtle's just kind of irritated with her mom. Judge Ford was instructing Theo in the art of bartending when the telephone rang. The snowbound newspaper man had found several items in the files. First, the engagement of Angela Wexler to D. Denton Deer. Next, several clippings on a lawsuit brought against Sam Westing by an inventor named... Hold on, please. Mr. Who waddled in with a large tray of appetizers. The judge pointed him to the serving buffet and apologized to the caller. I am sorry. Would you repeat that name? James Who. He claimed Westing stole his idea of the disposable paper diaper. One minute, please. The judge cupped her hand over the mouthpiece. Please don't leave, Mr. Who. I was hoping you'd stay for the party, as a guest, of course. Your wife and son, too. Who grunted. He hated parties. He had seen his fill of people eating and drinking and acting like clowns, jabbering like... So that's it. Jabbering, dropping clues. I'll be right back. The receiver hissed with an impatient sigh. Then the researcher went on. I've got a thick file of sports items on another who, a Doug who. Seems he runs a pretty fast mile for a high school kid. It's all I could find on the names you gave me, but I still have stacks of Weston clippings to go through. Thank you so much. The doorbell rang. The party was about to begin. And that's the end of chapter 9.